The Hook by Arthur Miller. Adapted for radio by Lawrence Bowen. Nineteen fifty one. Winter. New York Harbor is becoming visible in the first light of day. A freighter is turning off the channel and her bow is entering beside a pier. Lines are being cast from her bow. She is docking. Barney, a gang boss, is at the telephone. Behind him, we see a cheap cafeteria with longshoremen at all the tables, avidly waiting for him to put up the receiver. He hangs up and walks over to one of them. Get the gang, Marty. Uh, Pier 71. <laughs> Can we tuck this guy in, Barney? Yeah. He ain't worked a long time. He's a family head. No, I, I got to take care of my regular gang. Uh, listen, come down to shape up. We'll see what happens. One of my guys don't show up, Bo. I'll slip you in. Okay, see you down the pier. Outside, a semicircle of about a hundred men are standing around, shifting in the cold, waiting for a gang boss to nod to them. Moving through clots of men nodding here and there, Barney collects a group behind him. Marty does the same thing. The men are silent, anxiously watching the pier door as it rolls open. Through it walks Rocky, the pier boss, dressed in a good suit, an overcoat, and a fedora. With him is Farragut, the union delegate. He also wears a fedora, as does Phil, the hiring boss. What is this, Labor Day? It's ten to six already. Go ahead. Phil moves into the center of the semicircle of men and takes a handful of brass counters out of his pocket. Patsy, you got your whole gang? Everybody's here. Phil raises his hand and beckons to one man after another. How about you? Each of these leaps forward with relief, comes to him, gets a counter, and proceeds into the pier. A chauffeur-driven limousine arrives. In the back, Mr. Heinkel. He turns, lightly kisses his wife, closes the door, and proceeds toward the pier. He's 70 years old, dressed in conservative black. I got a couple great gangs today, Mr. Hankel. You're finished by tonight. I'll try my best, Mr. Hankel. Finish it by tonight. My peers has got to compete for these ships, and I can't if I'm going to pay overtime. Do I know a, a dinky cargo like this? That's right, Mr. Hankel. Going to have to have roller skates again today. Yeah, don't worry, Barney. I got it all fixed. About time. I've been coming home out of breath every night. Hey, Barney! He makes a revolving gesture with his hand. You know what I mean? Finish tonight, huh? Hey, delegates, that's the way you fixed it. Didn't I tell you this morning? No speed up. Yeah, you told me. Phil holds up two counters. Hey, I got two left. What do you want me to do with them? Give them to anybody. Phil glances around and tosses the two counters into the air over the heads of the men. The men dive for these and a melee begins. In the middle, Charlie and another man are struggling for a counter. The other man, younger, wins it, trots off like a fighter towards the pier. Charlie just stands there, getting his breath back. For that, they're paying your dues? Now, what do you want from me? Did I tell him to do that? You ought to be ashamed. Cargoes are moving up out of the hatches across the deck of the freighter and down to the pier. Marty and the gang are hooking a bundle of long steel reinforcing strips to a sling. Barney looks to old Dominic, who is driving his winch. He motions to hold it steady and slow. Rocky is watching. An expression of impatience grows on his face. He goes directly over to old Dominic, grabs the winch handle and pulls it up. The winch whines. The steel strips suddenly accelerate their rise. Barney looks up anxiously and turns to Rocky. Rocky makes the revolving motion faster. Barney glares back at him. Rocky walks away and takes out a little bottle of pills. Is about to swallow one when a terrific crash is heard. He looks up at the ship. Charlie, who's been leaning against a warehouse near the pier doors, grabs hold of him. If somebody got hurt, give me the job, will you? Will you, Rocky? Rocky casts him aside and dashes into the pier. On the freighter, men are pouring up out of every hatch and running toward the front of the ship, desperately clearing a mess of tangled steel strips to one side. Marty is sparking this whole operation. Suddenly, he sees the body. 
and everything stops. He walks over to it, bends down, and picks up a red clad hunting cap which we recognize as Barney's. Marty bursts into tears. Helplessly, he looks from man to man and then stops, looking at Rocky slowly coming through the crowd, a terrible anger growing in his eyes. Later, at the funeral parlor, Barney's cap is being passed from hand to hand, each hand dropping coins or bills into it. The cap ends up in a woman's hand. It's Therese, Marty's wife. She gazes around the room. In the center is the casket into which members of the gang are looking along with unidentified women and longshoremen. Therese crosses to Marty, who is sitting next to the window, sitting there as though his insides have died. Therese touches him holding out the cap. You give it to him. You were his best friend. Go ahead, honey. His jaw works in anger, and he gently shakes his head. Then he looks at Barney's widow, shrouded in black, three small children standing around her, and with some difficulty starts towards her through the crowd. He hesitates before laying the cap in her lap. Take it. From the man, for our appreciation. He was like a father to me. He lifts up her hand and places the cap under it in her lap. Take it. Everyone has been watching this. Outside, a medium-weight sedan is pulling up. Farragut is there as the front door opens and Louis, the Union president, emerges and starts across the sidewalk. He unlocks the Union hall front door. God, I've been there, Louie. I've been waiting with pins and needles. I forgot all about it. My daughter just graduated. They walk down the length of the hall. A bare store with camp chairs and a few bedraggled posters lining the walls. Why'd you call me up and remind me? Yeah, I figured you'd come, huh? That's terrible, the president ain't to a funeral. Louis immediately goes to the safe, works the combination, and opens it. I don't know what's the matter with me. Since I got back from Florida, I can't remember nothing. He takes a black tie out of the safe and removes his present painted tie. Behind them, Rocky has suddenly appeared in the doorway. That's some diplomacy. The president don't come to the funeral. My daughter just graduated. Louis reaches into the safe and takes out a handful of money. What are you going to do about this, Louis? The guy's got to learn to be more careful. Everybody's getting killed this year. Don't go yet, Louis. Why don't you talk to the ship owners? It's terrible, Louie. They're pushing too hard. What do you want from me? I'm fighting every day for the men. Why don't you get Jack Uptown on a ball? Tell him to talk to the owners. For one day, they want two days' work, Louie. Rocky, I'm trying all the time, kid. I'd better get in there. The funeral manager is closing the casket. A hand appears on his shoulder. He looks around and sees Louie. Louie looks in. From all you can tell, his grief is sincere. Then he goes over to the widow and takes out some bills, puts them into Barney's cap on her lap. Marty looks around and gestures with his head. His gang converge from various points of the crowd towards the casket as the funeral manager fastens down the lids. He and the other pallbearers, Piggy Dolan opposite him at the right-hand corner, take hold of the coffin rails. Louis edges his way beside Piggy, and begins to grab hold of the rail, too. Get your hands off there, Louis. What's the matter with you? You heard what I said. Louis stands his ground. Piggy steps away from the casket to make room for Louis. Hey, Pixie, get back there. What's the difference, Marty? Marty, in a silent rage, looks from Piggy to the other pallbearers and stalks out of the park into the street. Therese comes rushing out behind him. Now what did you have to do that for? What good did that do? He's liable to keep you off of the ships now. Why do you blow up like that? I'm going to let him put his hands on Barney. He's lucky I didn't give him a shot. Enzo comes up to them. Boy, you really pushed it on his face, Marty. That's the way, kid. I ain't seen that around here a long time. Listen, why don't you call a meeting or something? Get a guys together. Let's make a couple of changes around here. With what? With them cattle? Give them a little organization and they'll come out fighting, Marty. And they'll throw all these raggedy ears in the river. Like they done just now? <laughs> Louis give them one look, they'll fall down fainting. They're getting what they deserve. You're gonna be a cow, then you're gonna get pushed around. <sighs> it's 
Zacharias, why didn't you straighten him out? The guy's got it in him to be regular Moses around here. What can I do? Everything breaks his heart. He goes crazy mad. Up the street, Marty is near a newsstand, reading a paper. What are you doing? I'm going to get a regular job. Nine to five, pay every Saturday. No more ships, baby. I'm finished, and I mean it now. Marty, you'll be back in a week like you done last year. You're a long swarmer, Marty. Make up your mind already. Terry, I stick around here, I'm going to end up in trouble. I can't take this crap no more. I ain't no cow. I'll find some, and don't you worry. All right, honey. Just remember cash. That's what we gotta have. Cash, you know. Do I know? Marty, studiously, if inexpertly, places a two-inch square of cloth on a dime. Then on this, a round steel button. Then on the button, a steel back. Then he pulls a lever and takes out a cloth-covered button. He leans over and touches his neighbor, indicates his wrist for the time. The neighbor puts up ten fingers. He goes to a grimy window, looks out of the ships in the harbor. A foreman is slowly cruising behind the backs of these workers, supervising. How you doing? What time is it? Well, every five minutes you ask, what time is it, huh? When are you going to start working? What you doing here, growing? All right, what do you owe me? What I owe you? You're here two hours, all you've done is ask, what time is it? All right, keep it. What's the matter? Sit down. I choked to death in here. I'm from the ships. A playground in the midst of the slum with a mass of hundreds of ships jammed right up to the edge of the handball course. Marty, alone, sitting on a swing. He's reading one ounce with the slow deliberation of a barely literate man. Therese is walking towards him, carrying their youngest child. She's corralling three other children who are fighting amongst themselves. She doesn't notice Marty. Marty sees her, hesitates, then folds up the paper, turns his back towards her direction, and quickly moves off as though to avoid meeting her. A counter in a horse parlor store. Behind it is a worn-looking man taking a bet from a customer. Piggy Dolan. On the nose, right? I don't want like last time. You give me the show. Hey, hey, on the nose is on the nose. Want to see Rocky? Marty, where you been? Oh, you know, scrounging, pig. How's the gang? Well, there ain't no gang, Marty. Everybody's broke up all over the waterfront. Rocky gonna give you a gang of your own? Me, no. I'm true with the ships, pig. I was kind of hoping you'd make a gang, because this, I got one day the whole week, you know. I'm down to chasing horses, and I ain't catching none either. All right, you want to see Rocky? Take it easy, pig. Hey, let me know if you're making a gang, boy. Don't worry. Marty goes to the door of the back office and enters it. Oh, Marty. Listen, you coming here to blame me for Barney? Because if that is it, just save it, will you? What do you want from me? I'm a boss. I gotta get production or I'm dumped. Go to your union. Tell Louis protectors. Don't come. I'm, I'm a friend. Who's talking about Barney? What then? A, a gang, maybe? I give you a gang. Who's talking about a gang? Why don't you shut your mouth for two minutes, Rocky? That's very nice diplomacy. Tell a man like me to shut your mouth. Hey, I'm here on business, Rocky. But before he goes into it, don't bull me with that friend of the working man crap. Because you're no good. You know, Louis's no good, Farragut's no good, and nobody is no good. Don't tell me I'm no good. I said... Don't tell me I'm no good. Get some guts. Guys like you could throw all those phonies in the garbage in one month. With what army? I give you an army. You want to go after Louis? I give you a nice army. Rocky, how am I going to believe you? We had a strike in 1948, no? Or who brung in the scabs, Rocky? Am I looking at him? Rocky gets up, goes to the door, and bolts it. Returns to his chair. Start up an agitation. Take over this local. You do that, I give you everything I got. I want you to understand me, Marty. I ain't just a peer boss with a horse parlor on the side, see? Used to be I wasn't such a good friend of the waking man. I admit, I make mistakes. But two years ago, I make up my mind I'm going to get back my good name. Finish with the rackets, finish with the horses. So I get together $10,000, and I spend in the neighborhood of City Hall. They give me a year's lease on a certain pier, you understand? I'm in business, legitimate, up-and-up stevedore business. 
Then I get to get another hundred thousand. I buy machinery. I'm a happy man. What happened? What happened? One day I get a letter from our friend Louis' boss, Jack Uptown, which he's running all union. What Jack want? I should kick in a hundred a week for the widows and orphans of the longshore. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> yeah. So I figure well, all the other companies kicking in. I'm gonna be a crab. So I shoots him in a check. Two days later. Check comes back. He don't want no check, only cash. Ah, right. So he shoots him back another letter. I says to my sis, dear Jack, if my money is for the widows and orphans, you can cash my check in any bank. But if you want cash so you can buy for yourself another couple convertibles, so what do you say? Jack up down never says. Only from the next day on, for some reason, I can't get a ship to unload my pier. All the other pizz is busy. Only I'm standing there with a hundred thousand dollars worth of machinery, and I'm waving to the ships going by. You understand the way the ship owner's working with him? A guy like you, Marty, which everybody knows him, he's got guts. He could get men behind him and throw these rack up monkeys right in the river. I back you, Marty. I got a little money. I got some nice hot knock around guys can give you help. Now you know Rocky. You understand? I come to ask you for a bankroll, Rocky. Bankroll? You gonna be a bookie? I'm known all around. I could bring in business for you. Set me up. You know, I ain't so happy to hear that. I ask if you're happy. Marty is climbing the stairs of his house. It's an old dark tenement near the waterfront. On the top floor, around the door of his apartment. All kinds of boxes, broken wagons, broken toys, and a line of wash are littered. He takes a breath before opening his door, as though setting his determination. Therese is sitting on the floor with Grace, the infant, buttoning her dress. Pete, eight, is reading a comic book by the window. Jim, five, is dragging a doll around on the floor. The air of the apartment is one of clean bareness. Hello. <laughs> What are you laughing about? Oh, I'm glad to see ya. What's the matter? I cannot laugh. I got a piece of rope. Piece of rope is good. Hey, what's the matter, Superman? You don't say hello to the old man. Hello, Papa. Oh, don't strain yourself. Irene Tan enters in a starch dress, all brushed. Whoa! Ho, ho, look at you. <laughs> don't mess me up, Daddy. Look at what we got in this corner. What's、well, everybody so beautiful tonight? We got a cake from the store. Your birthday. Well, didn't you know? Didn't I know? Well, all day I was telling everybody I got a birthday for the oldest. I gotta come home early. Wait till you see the cake. It's yellow. <laughs> This Irene is such a beautiful. They buy a cake from the store. So it's a birthday, Mama. I'm no dead. I can make a cake. Marty goes in the bathroom and starts washing his hands. Therese comes in, sits on the bathtub rim, and watches him. A large carp is lazily swimming in the tub. I like to eat that fish already. And give him another week. He get nice and fat. He could hardly move himself now. Nah, he's a baby. My grandfather used to pull him in. They were that big. I bet you he's crying there for the ocean.、Hmm. Has a job. Nah, I didn't stay there. I knew you didn't. How'd you know? I think you better go back, shape up. You won't be satisfied until not you. Not me, no more. Marty, baby, I got four dollars. I got five hundred. We're two months behind with the bedroom set. And... She breaks off as he takes a roll of bills out of his pocket and shows them to her. I'm a bookie. She stares at him. Rocky, give me a bank of five hundred case I have to pay off. Everything the guys lose, I get fifty percent. So we'd be all right, see? Couldn't you get arrested? If they pick me up by the time I get to the precinct, there's a bail bond man waiting for me there. I sign my name and walk out. She turns away. Terry. He turns her back to him. I'm telling you, I'm afraid I go back to the ships, and they they start giving me the old rook, and I'm gonna lay somebody out. You understand me? I understand, Marty, but a bookie. She notices Irene standing outside the door, staring at them. A shocked look on the child's face. Oh, Papa's in business. Come on, we celebrate. Marty stands a moment in the bathroom, pain and guilt and anger in his face.
Irene enters from the kitchen with the cake. The candles are lit. When do I blow it out? I could have made twice as good. Oh my. First, I'm supposed to give you a kiss, right? Yeah, but、uh, you didn't give her her present. Oh. Marty looks at a loss for a split second. Therese gets up and goes to the bureau and takes out a small box. What? You forget you bought it? Yeah. He kisses Irene tenderly, and gives it to her. She is almost fainting with joy as she wordlessly opens it. She takes out a fountain pen. She stares at it. Oh, that's pretty, Marty. You like it? My name. My name is on it. Sure. Irene Ferrara. Oh, Daddy. Wait. You gotta blow the candles out. I, I can't, Mama. I'm. Well, what are you crying for? Every little thing you start to cry. What's the matter, honey? Daddy. Why? Why is he going to be arrested? What you talking about, Irene? That wasn't me. We were talking about some guy. Come on, quick, blow before the candles all melt. No, she's supposed to make a wish. That's right. Make a wish, darling. Irene simply stares at Marty. Well, make a wish. Irene keeps staring at him. I said nobody's getting arrested. Make a wish. You hear me? I wish. Not that way. Why are you running everything? Shut up. No, Marty. She's supposed to wish to herself. Oh well. So go wish to yourself, Irene. Go ahead. Just think it. Well, anything? Sure. Whatever you want. The best thing. I bet she's wishing in a boyfriend. Leave、oh. the girl alone. All right. I'm wishing. I bet she. Will you shut up? She's wishing. Okay. Now blow them all out. Go ahead, darling. Bend down. Now blow them out. Yeah. <laughs> now you know you'll have a party every year from now on. What do you wish? Oh, but it was a good wish. Come on. Yeah, Come on. Yeah. Wish I wished a couch. A couch. I was only wishing. <gasps> no, 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 no. We're gonna get it. Don't worry. You hear me, everybody? We're gonna have a couch. Yeah, yeah. They laugh with his excitement, and Irene, glowing, finds he's kissing her hand. A swarm of men move onto a loaded sling as it reaches the deck below. In the midst of the unloading work, Marty is taking down Piggy's bed. On Enzo's face is a look of bitter disgust. Piggy gives him a dollar. Now don't forget, Piggy. It's just my opinion, because I don't guarantee nothing. Your opinion's good enough for me, kid. All work stops. And the men move all over the hold, finding their lunch bags and boxes in various nooks and crannies. Where all these guys come from? I didn't see one of them before. What's up? They're all new guys. Louis selling membership books, seventy-five bucks a piece. They work a week, then he throws them out, gets whole new gangs again, and the regulars are out on the street chewing ozone. Piggy drinks from his wine jug. How do you get him, Pig? Dumb luck. Marty takes the jug from him and looks at it. They're taking the payoff through the wine store now. Will you? Since when you drinking wine all of a sudden? Shame on you! What do you want from me? Shame! Without a word, he walks toward the gangway. How are you, Marty? I hear you're cleaning up. Hey, Farragut, and you got no shame for yourself? What? Your own <laughs> local standing out there warming up the lamp posts, and strangers you give work. Why are you always scratching me for? They're paying you a hundred and quarter a week. Raise a beef. You're the delegate, don't you remember? You feel like beefing? Go ahead. All right. Watch. He goes past Farragut down the gangplank to walk Louis. Hello, Louis. Remember me? Sure, kid. How are you? I just heard something you ought to get going on. A guy tells me somebody in the local is selling membership books to strangers, seventy-five smack as a piece. No, kid. Which I thought I better go right to you because the way you're protecting the men all the time, they should have work.、Well, thanks for telling me. I get after that right away. Cause it ain't nice, Louie, when your own guys ain't got what to eat. You know. Sure, sure. I hear you're a bookie. That's right. Then why'd you go book? Ah, which reminds me, somebody is taking payoffs through the barber shop and the wine store. I almost forgot to tell you. Hey, hey, don't be telling me nothing, huh? Can you remember that? I never forgets nothing, Louis. Listen, Bookie, if you worked as hard as me for these here men, I know you worked so hard you had to go to Florida six weeks. I think you must have fallen on your head sometimes. You ever fall on your head? My head, other guys' heads. He turns to Rocky and to Farragut. <laughs> What? Is he making some kind of accusations? Hey, 
Keep up the good work, Louie. What's his angle, that guy? Yeah, uh, he's just a pest, that's all. Oh, throws a good argument, that guy. Hey, find me out what's his angle, Farragut. And now it's Boomerang, Lil May, Swanee, and Fancy Girl. Fancy Girl's Every window of Marty's car is jammed with faces listening avidly to a race, including Marty, Piggy, and Sam. Fancy Girl, Fancy Girl is coming up fast on Boomerang and Lil May. She's coming, she's coming. Piggy tenses visibly as though his whole life hung on it. Marty reaches over and excitedly grips Piggy's shoulder. The stretch, Hank, still boomerang, Lil May, and Fancy Girl. Make your move, and they're holding, make your move. Holding, come on, make your move. Come on, make your move. The finish, the finish. Come on. They're over, and it's boomerang, Lil May, and Fancy Girl. The faces turn into defeat and pull away from the car window. That's some tip you had there, Marty. Asparagus tip. When I say I had a tip... I said it was my opinion, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, All right, yeah, from now on, no yeah. more opinions. Just ask me, I'm not going to tell you. Marty. I told you not to bet, didn't I? You've got no right to be betting, so don't blame me. Who's blaming? You loan me a buck, will you? Put it on something good for me tomorrow. All right, Ted. Maybe I'll come true for you tomorrow. Enzo, turning away, spits meaningfully. <coughs> hey! Marty goes to him. What you needling me all the time? Enzo barely glances at him, but his disdain is manifest. They're going to bet anyways, ain't they? What's the matter? It's bad they should have an honest bookie once in their life. I see something. Don't give me them looks. Tom, a detective, is settling himself in the front seat of Marty's car. Oh. Tom, come on now, will ya? Drive to the precinct. No, three times in one week you pinch me? What am I, beautiful or something? Go ahead, kid, drive. Marty walks out of the police station with Tom. Marty, this is number 19 for you. You know that? If you would mind your own business, I wouldn't be in once. Just because the mayor is trying to make a showing, you got to pick on me. Now go find a crook, will ya? Just want to let you know, Marty, you got a record now. You know what that means? Stay out of trouble. At this moment, Marty sees Irene watching him from the other corner. Irene? A look of wonderment and shock is on her face. He looks from her up to the sign over the precinct door. A look of deep guilt on his face. He instantly starts hurrying toward her. She turns and runs into a crowd. Marty starts into the crowd, but he's even guilty before these strangers, and turns and walks away, deeply distressed, peering into his life. He looks across the street. Two windows in an upper floor show a candle burning in an otherwise dark room. Marty knocks at a door. Knocks again. Marty! What are you doing here? Can I come in? Uh, sure, sure, come on in. We're just giving the floors a wax. Say hello to Marty, team. Hello. Hi, Marty, hi. Hello. Oh, hey, Marty. Five children from three to nine years of age are kneeling with rags, polishing the floor. The room is lit by candles, and is hospital clean, but almost bare of any furniture. Um, can I have a minute, please, Pig? Marty makes a move to open the door to another room. Piggy quickly stops him. Uh, wax is still wet in there, Marty. Come in here. Hey, you like it? Oh, yeah. You, you could break your neck in here, huh? <laughs> you keep a nice house, Pig. Oh, any news from the wife? Nah, I give her up. She ain't never coming back no more. She's just a bum, that's all. I keep them busy in the house, or I'd be running all over the neighborhood after them. What happened to the electric? Nah, we got a bad break. I was spliced into the bakery next door, but the owner found out yesterday, so now he pulls his switch at night, so we only got electric during the daytime. But <laughs> we're living, ain't we? I just happen to be passing by, and I, um, I remember that I forgot to call in your bet today. Here's your buck. Oh, uh, great. You could put on something tomorrow and I won't owe you. Hey, do me a favor, huh? A guy like you shouldn't bet. Here, don't be a sucker no more. L listen, I ain't lucky in Brooklyn. Maybe I'm lucky in Belmont. Keep it. Piggy, we're waiting. Oh, hello, Marty. Marty looks at Sal, mystified, then goes through the half-open door. On chairs and on the floor, the original gang. About 18 present. Just... Having a little get-together, you know? Uh-oh. Well, what's the secret? Oh, there, there ain't no secret. Sure, there's a secret, Piggy. 
This is for working longshoremen here, Marty. You trying to insult me, Enzo? That what you trying to do? No, I'm just telling you. That what we... am I, a fink or something? What kind of way is that to talk to me? Oh, leave him stay. Sure. Sit down, Marty. We're trying to think up how to throw Louie out of the local. Louie? He's selling jobs right and left. We're going to throw him out with all the hoodlums. We put in a real president, which he'll fight for the men, you know? Because the new election's coming right up. Yeah. There's over 700 men in the local. Hey, that's it. And we're trying to figure some way we can make a campaign so they won't be as scared. And, and they'll vote him out. Who are you going to run? Well, we... Hey, now, wait a minute. We can't go shooting off our mouth. Louie finds out that we're doing that, somebody's going to get his head knocked off. If a guy ain't fighting with us, then we got no business talking to him about this. So I don't want to find nobody in the river. Now, he gets out of here or I go. Marty glances around the tense room, and he gets up to go. Now I've seen everything. What? Why? Why? You didn't even do nothing. You're scared already. What's such a secret? You want a meeting? Call the men and stand on the corner and meet. We ain't scared, and we ain't crazy neither. Maybe that's what you need. A couple of crazy guys to open their mouths around here. <laughs> like you, you mean, huh? A man which you could have been another Barney? So he's taking money from the workers like some kind of fake. Shame on you. A guy who can talk like you can talk. A guy everybody knows which, which he could raise up his head and, and a thousand men would follow him. And what do you do? Huh? What do you do? Marty is angered deeply, so deeply. Deeply, he cannot speak. He turns and strides out. Marty and Therese in the double bed. Against the wall, a crib with the infant in it. Marty stares at the ceiling, deeply troubled. He hears a slight sound and turns to look. Irene in the adjoining room is tossing restlessly in her sleep, the two younger boys sleeping soundly together beside her. He gets up. There's guilt and pity in his face. Baby? Irene opens her eyes, and a look of puzzlement and even fear appears on her face. The fear of a child who has lost a previous understanding of her father. Something the matter? No, Papa. I wasn't really arrested. You know how that works, don't you, baby? See, Cookie, it's like this, see? He touches her cheek. Therese has awakened and is listening in the next room from her pillow. When I was a little boy, like your brother Pete, my father went away and never come back. And my mother and me, we didn't have what to eat, you know? And all the time when I was growing up to be a man, I said to myself, my kid's going to have good to eat. I'm going to take care of my kids. And their mama. So when I was big enough, I goes down to the piers, and sometimes I make pretty good, and sometimes I make nothing, but worst of all, I can't stand to be ashamed of myself. You understand what I'm talking about? When I'm on the ship and maybe a straw boss calls me a dirty name, I can't stand it. Or maybe they want a couple of dollars before they give me a job, you know. I don't pay nobody for no job, you understand? Sometimes he make us put too much load on the slings. I can see that, and my blood boils up because that's that's how the cable breaks, and they kill a the guy. And nobody cares for him. Yeah, I can't stand to see that. You know what I'm saying, Irene? So what I have in mind, see, I get together a little money. Maybe I could buy a boat, get a couple of good men, and we fish in the ocean and sell the fish. No one have to go near the piers no more, you see? That's what I'm trying to do. I I bought you a couch and a television, didn't I? Well, you're going to have whatever you want, see? You understand now? But, but if you get arrested... I ain't really arrested, Irene. What do you want me to do? What do you want from me, Irene? She doesn't speak. And tears are coming into her eyes. You remember Barney, don't you? Well, he died, baby. I got no steady gang no more. I have to stand on the street and wait for somebody to point to me. Is that what you want? You know what I feel like when I stand in the street like that? 
Like the whole world is making a jerk out of me. I can't stand that, Irene. I can't stand it. You're crying. Now, why are you crying? Don't. Don't. Marty. You better go back. Make up your mind already. That's your trade. You're stuck with it. We'll make out. I swear. When God made the waterfront, he must have had it in for somebody that day. A sling loaded with coffee bags rises out of a freighter. Suddenly, a coffee bag slides up the top of the load and falls into the hole. Hey, hey, hey! The men look up quickly and scuttle away from its path. The bag hits the deck. Not hurting anyone. It bursts open on striking. Beans flying. All right, down here! Several of the men look up and put their fingers to their lips and laughingly say, Shh! One man holds the bag while the rest have beans poured down their open collars, filling their shirts. Sleeper opens his pants belt and there's an uproar of laughter as the coffee is poured into his pants legs, tied at the ankles with rope, his legs getting fatter and fatter. Sleeper, Sal, and another longshoreman escape down the gangway, their clothes bulging with coffee beans. They pass Louis, Phil, Farragut, and Rocky. Sleeper, what are you, in a show or something? Hey, just gonna give me some lunch. Since when did you get so fat? What do you got in there? Nah, hey, what do you mean? So I, I got fat. His pants leg rope suddenly opens, and coffee beans start leaking around his shoe. Put that back. Golly, yes. You're robbing coffee now? Uh, I'll lay you off, Rocky. The bag probably busted. Didn't it? Yeah, sure. Could have killed somebody. You know, it's a shame, Rocky, with them bags. Farragut, we want to see you. Come in. Yeah, go ahead. She what's the matter. Go with him, Phil. Above, on deck, a hubbub of excited conversation is heard. He's coming up, Marty. Come on. You talk to him. I don't want no trouble, Dom. I mind my business. That's all. You got a record, kid. Leave me alone. Farragut and Phil walk into the crowd of longshoremen. Hey, what happened here? We work through supper Sunday night. We get double for working through bingo hour like that. We didn't get nothing. Hey, all right, all right, I'll take it up. When, Farragut? What do you mean, when? He said he'll take it up, didn't he? You're a hiring boss, Phil. I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to my delegate. Hey, come on. This he... here gang is nearly $300 short. The man said he's going to take it up, didn't he? The other time we got screwed, it took four months, and we ended up with 50%. Today, Farragut, right now. No, not right now. When we go through the records and find out what's what. Yeah, check my figures. Don't give me orders. You make a riot every time you work. I ain't going to put you to work no more, you hear me? All I'm asking. Hey, shut up. I'm sick and tired of Don't tell me to shut up. Shut up. Right, you... Suddenly, Phil is cracked on the jaw and is falling back and trying to get his balance. Marty is the attacker. Phil fights back. You crazy? Cut it out! All right, get back to work. I ain't finished with you yet. You want to finish? Get working. But why are you standing there? Good guy, Marty. Thanks. What do you mean, good guy? What you gonna do? What do you mean? Nobody work till they settle this. What do you say, fellas? How about it, huh? You stand by till they settle. What do you say? Yeah. 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 yeah okay. You crazy? Yeah. Didn't you hear the whistle? Go to work! Louis and Mr. Heinkel are at the foot of the gangway looking up at the ship. When do they work, Louis? Uh, you got nothing to worry, Mr. Heinkel. Mm. Louis walks to the gangway and starts the upward climb. The longshoremen on deck turn towards him. Silence descends. Hey, uh, let's get to work, fellas. We'll settle everything later. We ain't waiting four months again for our dough, Louis. Right, look, right, right, yeah. look, kid. The man is waiting for this ship. He get his ship when we get our dough. Right, right, yes, right. Sir. Yes, sir. What do we got, a redbird here? <laughs> You're laying rotten eggs, Louis. And it's beginning to stink. <laughs> I think, honest to God, you must have fall on your head. Uh-uh, this time I fall on your head. Why'd you get another joke, huh? Oh, I got plenty jokes. I don't want to have to do this, fellas, but we got a contract with this company. 
Whoever ain't working in five minutes, I lift his book. You just don't want your books lifted, do you? Huh? Louis moves along the line of men surrounding him. They avoid his eyes but stand their ground. Louis turns to Marty. All right, kid. We're going to have a meeting in the local tomorrow night. I'm going to lift your book, and you don't work no ships no more. Violating discipline. Five minutes, fellas. Put your heads on right. This monkey will be back in the trees tomorrow night. Five minutes. Stick here. Stick together. He'll give you your dough. Right, right. Yeah, you're going to guarantee he don't lift my book? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. How can you lift so many books? Fellas, listen. Time's up, fellas. Anybody don't want to work, get off the ship. Let's go. Hey, where you going? Come on. Where you going? Stop out of me. Come hey, on. fellas, you can't lift all these books. Stick here. Don't go back. Great. He's forgot something. He's forgot to kiss his hand. Hey, hey, oh, hey, hey, hey. Oh, hey. Marty, all right, Marty, Marty shut up. We tried. We didn't make it. Well, go ahead. Go to work. Well, what's the use if only a couple of us... It's no use. But I ain't working. Listen, don't be crazy. Go away, will ya? I'll be there tomorrow night, Louie. I'll let you try to take my book. Louie is expressionless. Marty passes very, very close to him, as though physically challenging him, and descends the gangway. What's the use, Marty? Come back! Marty, come on! Ta. Marty walks along the pier ship's rail, absolutely determined and furious. Later, Louis, Farragut, and half a dozen goons are on the platform in the Union Hall. Marty and the longshoremen sit surrounded by empty chairs in rows. Marty has his arms folded across his chest. At the entrance to the hall, Enzo is beckoning longshoremen to come in from the street, and they're filing past him. There's plenty of room, fellas. Let's get inside. Come on in, fellas. We worked all night, kid, and I think we're going to have a big crowd backing you up. You hear, Marty? The guys are behind you. Like ten miles behind you, me. Oh, get yourself some faith in the man, Marty. Don't be such a pistol all the time. Hey, the whole street's filling up. Yeah, <laughs> what I tell you, Marty? Hey, who's them guys over there? No members? About 20 men sit together, the submarines. These are silent, black-clothed immigrants. They have a foreign, frightened look about them. Them guys, I would say nine-tenths of them in this country illegal, see? So they had to vote what Louis says, because if they don't, maybe the immigration will make trouble for them. That's what them guys are here for. Submarines. Louis and Farragut and the goons are whispering on the platform. I think he really must have fallen on his head. A sharp, new, loud sound of men is heard. Louis' face drops. A packed mob is pressing into the hall, spreading into the seats. Okay, close the doors. Meeting's in order. Hey, hey, we got more coming. They ain't all in. Hear what I said? Close the door. Okay. Call in the meeting to order. Let, let's, uh, let's settle down, boys. Settle down. Fellas. Fellas. First, I want to say I'm glad we got such a good turnout. <laughs> we even got some from the zoo tonight. <laughs> so, so here's a story, fellas. We got us a traitor. Now, you know me, live and let live. But we got to stand by our contract with the ship owners. And when a man... Hey, it's a Fink contract. I, I, hey, hey. I happen to have the floor, mister. Oh, what do you mean, Louis? Is that contract is good for a ship owner, but it sticks for us. Don't tell me, eh? I got the right to talk here. All right, all right. Leave him have his hemorrhage. You finished, mister? Go ahead, talk. Can't you be a gentleman? Oh, you be a gentleman, and I'll be a gentleman. I've been in five different unions in my life. And they helps the men. Uh, Not like this here out there. Right. Right. So, so you're finished now, okay? I got the right. Yeah. Yes. Suddenly, goons start pressing into his row from both sides. Marty and the gang get up quickly to help him. The goons retire to the aisles. Marty and the gang return to their seats. Uh, all right, now. Let, let, let's settle down, fellas. We can clean this up in five minutes. You yes, yes. heard about the illegal stoppage Marty Ferrara pulled off. All right, if a guy wants to set up like a big shot, let him run for office. Don't let him 
so the bosses can say we got no discipline. We got no, y- you know what I mean? Hey, a cheer for discipline, fellas. <laughs> What you do, wake up? What are you stalling around for, Louie? You were scared because we all come? Ah, get to the business! You just just did me a favor to come! So everybody can see who's backing up this here traitor! The regulations is that nobody who breaks discipline can be a member. Therefore, Marty Ferrara... Hand over your book. Ferrara, let's have it. Marty takes a little black book out of his pocket, glancing around to estimate the men. He stands. Give me a little vote first. No, no, we don't need no vote for this. Pass it up. Marty presses out of his row toward the aisle. Hey, hey, I didn't tell you come up here. I says pass it up. I want to give it to you personally. Give it to the sergeant at arms. Give me that book. There's a squawking scrape of chairs as Enzo and the gang stand up, ready for a melee. You start a riot? Hey, give me that book! Marty starts up the aisle, walks towards the platform, and makes the small jump under it. I got the floor! You keep the floor, I'll talk! I I, I give you my book, Louie, but I just want to thank the guys. Can't even thank the guys? <laughs> Which I never believed yes, because you come out for me like this, fellas. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. thought I was gonna be all alone tonight. No, 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 no. I want you should take an example here. Yeah. He points at the goons. You ever seen them look like that? No. Because we're all here. Yeah. Yeah. Only when they got us one at a time, they so tough. Yeah. Tonight we got a little democracy yeah. in here. Yeah. And this is what we got to do when they're negotiating a contract for us. So they don't sell us out to the ship owners every time. Get off the platform! Fully half of the audience are on their feet and more are rising. If this fink can take from me my bread and butter, then we're a slave in a chain. I was born in Italy. I lived in fascism. And this is fascism. Let's bring America down to the waterfront. America! All right, we vote on this monkey, but one at a time. Just shows we know who's for this here traitor here. Louis comes to the edge of the platform and points his finger at the submarines. Terror glows up in their faces. Did you see? Did you know? Should he keep his book? No. Pazani, Pazani. I gotta beg the pardon from the Irishman. I want to talk to the fellas from the old country who got over the border in the dark. Paisani. You wanted a vote, they're voting, ain't they? That's not right. Is this the America you broke your backs to come to? Mm. Huh? We're, we're trying to live like, like human beings. Hey, non prendete il mio pane. Don't take the bread and butter from me, huh? The guys all hate you. We're your brothers. Yeah. From the heart, fellas. Vote from the heart. Yeah. We'll protect you. Vota! Senti cose ti sto ordinando. Vota, sì, no. Vota! Louis concentrates this last imprecation to Bondi, one of the submarines. Vote, Bondi, no. Huh? No. Bondi suddenly stands up. He pushes along the road to the aisle. You came from Italy to steal from my kids? Bondi! Bondi! Hey, don't let him Come back here, Bondi! Hey, sit down and you don't work on a ship again! Grazie, Bondi, grazie! Okay, let's vote. Who's for me? You can't do that way! Who's for me, fella? Who's for Louis? Tears are in Marty's eyes as he surveys the men. He opens his hand with his book in it and kisses it, then flings out his arms as though to embrace all these longshoremen. Suspended three months! Marty flies across the platform at Louis, a cry of utter fury and frustration on his lips. The goons make for Marty, and the gang leaps onto the platform from the floor. (laughs) 
Yeah? Oh, hello, Louie. Listen, Louie, nobody's telling me who to hire, who not to hire on this here pier. What's the matter? He wants me to fire Ferrara. Huh, that's too bad. It was nice to see one of them standing up to him. Yeah. Well, he is a troublemaker. Marty and two longshoremen are hooking the net to cables on the pier. Louis says get off the pier. Louis says. I can't help myself. Three weeks already. I didn't get a day. You mean tell me on my home pier? Marty, if it was up to me... After what Louis done to you? Trouble is, you got inside you us in a basketball, only hot. A group of longshoremen are shooting crafts alongside the pier doors. Raise the place. Pipes. A blind man walks towards them with the tray hanging from his neck, stick in hand. It's razor blades, fellas. Buy from a shipwreck, fellas. You don't want to sink a shipwreck. They don't want any dark eyes. Marty? You got me again. How'd you like that? <laughs> what? Did he call Rocky? I guess so. Is this the way it happened with you, dark eyes? Me? What do you want to know that for? I always meant to ask you. Mm, they never made no phone calls about me. You just caught me alone one night, that's all. And when I woke up, I couldn't see nothing. Nothing no more. I feel like I am boiling all the time, Dark Eyes. Oh, it's good. Get real hot, Marty. I think maybe you could get hot enough to burn him out of there. But don't walk around alone too much, you know? I'd like to see them try something with me. When I go down, I take tree with me. You don't worry about me, Dark Eyes. You need a buck? I could loan a buck? I think I go over to Hoboken or Staten Island. Give them a wrong name. They don't know me so much over there. I gotta get a couple of days. I'll see you. Get hot, kid. Get hot. Marty is working on another ship. A supervisor comes over to him. Your name's Ferrara, ain't it? Me? No. Sorry, bud. The supervisor thumbs over his shoulder. Marty drops what he's holding and bitterly walks over towards the gangplank. Another day, another ship. Marty is stacking cargo. He looks much more worn now, a haunted look on his face. Hey, you! He motions Marty to come on. Marty's face. Therese walks out of a store past a sign which reads, Dale Bread, Six Cents, Dale Cake, Cheap. She crosses to a pushcart and speaks to the merchant who takes out a handful of half-rotten tomatoes. Marty has been watching. On his face, there is pain and shame. Marty walks up to his front stoop, but he can't go in. He's ashamed to come home with nothing. Passing him comes a drunk, staggering wildly. On his head are two good hats. In his hands, he delicately holds up a newish suit and a shiny pair of shoes. He might be a sailor on a binge who's won a crap game. He tries to grasp a lamppost and slowly slides to the sidewalk, lays out, and doesn't move. Marty turns away, starts a step, halts. The full desperation is on him now. He turns back to the drunk, glances around at the empty street. Suddenly, he bends down, takes the suit, hat, and shoes, and runs, disappearing around the corner. Marty emerges from a hawk shelf, stuffing money into his pocket, furtive. He walks rapidly away. Marty is at the counter of a grocery store. The proprietor finishes loading a bag. Eh... Uh. At six, and uh, call it 75 cents, 675. Give me a bottle of wine. In the way he blurts it out, there's a significance for the proprietor who looks up at him. I gotta work, a couple of days. Bottle of wine costs you six. When will I work? Tomorrow morning. Come here half past five, I can get you two days. Okay. Marty appears in the doorway of his apartment. <laughs> He's carrying the grocery bag. And halted on seeing Pete weeping, a roller skate on the floor beside him. What happened? He warped skates. <laughs> Get up, Pete. You robbed? I I loaned them off a kid. 
He's lying. How do you know? Who's gonna loan him skates brand new? Don't make a thief out of him so quick. Can't you see he robbed? I said don't make a thief out of him. Where'd you work? What's the difference? I worked. I'm cooking. Since when we start drinking wine? The end of the line dies in her throat oh. as she sees the angry oh. humiliation on his face. We see Mama turn from the wine to him and Papa and Irene and Pete. They all know what happened. You're working tomorrow? Yeah. Irene goes over to him and stands beside him as though waiting. He kisses her silently. Tears begin to flow in her eyes. Hey, what are you crying? Is that the wine to work with? What's the matter with you? I'm going to buy wine to work? Me? I just... Well, yeah, to warm up a little bit. Come on, let's see what's on the television. Oh, no, I forgot the electric. I get washed. He strokes her hair, then starts through to the in-between room and halts. The television set is gone. He turns and sees that the couch is gone, too. What happened to the couch and television? What do you think happened? Shut up, Mama. They took him. You let him take it? What do you mean I let him? They couldn't wait a couple of weeks. At least the couch you could have made them leave. Irene starts to set the table. She picks up the skate from the table. Marty strides over to her, takes it from her hand, and turns on Pete. Where'd you get this? What'd I tell you about Robin? I work like a horse, so you're gonna turn out to be a thief? They're gonna let you into high school if you start robbing? All right, stop. stop. You could have made them leave the couch. I come back, the whole, the whole house is gone. The girl wants a couch. You could make them leave the what couch? What do you want from me? Unable to bear her pain, he grabs up the jug of wine and flings it against the metal kerosene stove. It smashes, and the wine flows over the floor. Without pausing, he rushes out of the apartment. Therese starts to run after him. Stops. Outside, Marty is almost running. Without a pause, he enters the Union Hall. At the far end of the hall is Farragut, standing over a table figuring on a sheet of paper for two longshoremen. A few tough-looking characters are sitting along the wall. All turn towards Marty, sensing his wildness. He walks over to the poster on the wall. Election for president of the local. Anybody who wants to run for president, write his name below. Let me a pencil a minute. What's the matter with you? Marty writes his name, then turns and suddenly flings the pencil across the hall at Farragut. Hey. Then he walks to the door and goes out. Get me Louie on the phone. Marty is speaking at a street meeting near the piers. The men listening intently. Guys don't have to get killed here so quick. They get killed because we got speed up. And why we got speed up? Because the contract don't make no provision to limit the sling load. If I'm elected, we're going to have a load limit so the cables don't bust. Not like now in the Fink contract. Fellas, we gotta have genuine working longshoremen leading this union. So, so you be president, you won't be longshoremen no more. Then watch me. You know why we got no democracy in this here union? Because you guys do not care. How many of you have come to a meeting? Six? Seven? There's nearly 700 members in this local. A big car cruises to a halt 20 yards away, and all, including Marty, turn to it. In the car is Louis. Farragut walks up to him. Where'd he get the crowd? Right, got even better than this before. What's his sentiment? But who knows, Louis? They listen. They don't say nothing. Some for, some against, you know. <sighs> he's coming out of his pants and he's running for president. You gotta give him credit. I told you, he's no monkey. Makes a nice speech. Oh, yeah, oh, he holds a crowd, all right. Yeah, I made a mistake. I should have dumped him and put him on the payroll. That's what I told you. Yeah. I want to talk to him. I told him this morning, go talk to you, huh? He don't want to talk to you, though. All right, let him build himself up a little bit first. I could understand. Rocky knows him good, don't he? He knows him, yeah. Tell Rocky, meet me over his place. I want to talk to him. What kind of angle Rocky playing? I don't know. You don't know? Rocky don't know. Instead of fighting for his men... They should live like human beings. He's riding around to Florida all the time like a big shot. What's he say such a thing for? Tell Rocky I want to see him right away. 
Two bucks fleet wing to win. At the counter of Rocky's store, a man is reading off a sheet of paper into a telephone. Twenty bucks personality win. Rocky get here yet? Sure, Louis. He's in his office. Two on Buckwood Place. Hello, Louis. How's business? Between the syndicate and the cops, I take home beans. What's the matter? I want to talk to you. This here Marty, what's he bucking for? Wants to be president. What, is he crazy? I ask you what he's bucking for. I'm telling you, he wants to be president. You working with him? Me? No. No? No. <sighs> Rocky, I want to make proposition to you. I want you run for president. Me? Yeah. Yesterday was the last day. I'll change it. Make tomorrow the last day. What chance I got for president? You'll get some votes. I want you to get some votes, you understand? You worry for that crazy guy. It's a crazy world. Who knows what could happen? He makes a nice speech. He is getting crowds. So do me a favor, huh? No, I don't want to run. I get 20 votes or something, they'll laugh at me. What do you want? Same what I always wanted. A peer? I can't get you no peer, Rocky. Peer's what I want, which I paid for it already. You fix me up, legitimate stevedore, with my own peer, I run for president. You won't have nothing to worry about. Push a couple buttons, Louie, get a peer. You'll be all right with this monkey. <sighs> it ain't worth a peer, Rocky. Then that's that. Think it over. We could be good friends again. You think it over. I split the vote for you. You ain't got to worry. You won't have to bust no heads. You can go back to Florida. Yeah, let me know what you say. Pee off. I want a peer, Louie. 500. Go home, will ya? Let me know. Marty's cap is turned over and small change pours onto the table in his apartment. Therese closes the door, her eyes on the mound of money. Marty, Piggy, Sal, Enzo, Sleeper, Horse, and little Dominic are standing around the table. I told you, didn't I? A man stands up and tells the truth, they'll get behind him. That's right, <laughs> that's yeah. right, Therese. Yeah. Want to see you. What for? What kind of diplomacy you got? Man comes, wants to see you. What kind of answer you give him? All right, what do you want? This is only for you. We're all in this together. What's on your mind? Louis just come to me. Want to see me. Talk to me. Very important. Put me proposition. Want me run for president? Well, you can't. Yesterday was the last day to run. What, are you Boy Scout or something? He want me to run? I can run. What are you? I split the vote, Marty. You might as well get out of the shoe shine box. What you answer him? I told him to go take a jump for himself. <laughs> I appreciate that, Rocky. That's the first time you talk with a little diplomacy. Marty, Louis is scared. That's what I want. No, that's dangerous for you. I tell you, Marty, Louis ain't never gonna walk away from that job. Rocky, listen, I ain't scared of him, and I ain't scared of nobody. These guys ain't scared of nobody, neither. <laughs> Excuse me, fellas, I'm just asking a question. What's going to happen, fellas, when Louis sends out the militia after you? What's going to happen to all the longshoremen, which they're so brave now? You know what I mean, fellas? When he catches one of you in the dark. We take yeah, care of ourselves. You playing Patsy Hill or you want to dump Louis? Let me send over some of my boys. They watch out hey, for no, you. Whoa, whoa, no, whoa, 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 boys. No. Come on, Rocky. Can I ask you a question? Huh? What do you want? I'm a friend of the working man. I want people should understand Rocky. I want my good name. My father was a longshoreman. For 15 years, I was too. I want to give you help. Rocky, look, we can't have no hoodlums. No hoodlums. No hoodlums. No, no, no. What do you call them, a gangster? That's what you call me. No, he yeah. didn't call you a gangster. But I don't want to have nobody say nothing against me. You got very bad diplomacy. I want to tell you that. But I go in clean, Rocky, or I don't go in. That's what I get for trying to help you, huh? Now, wait a minute, Rocky. You don't believe me, huh? I'm telling you, Louis is scared. I give you some nice knock-around guys. It won't look good, Rocky. All right. Now I know what you think of me. Hey, 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 hey. Rocky, hey, hey, hey don't be crazy, easy. Rocky. That's the last time I'm going to try to save your life. Last time. Take it from me, Marty. Uh, with a couple of nice knock-around hoodlums behind you, the longshoremen, you know, they'll know you mean hey, business. Hey, hey, we're knocking Th out one mob to move in another mob. Rocky's a gangster. Yeah, but... Uh... What do you say, Terry? You got a record. Remember that? Don't mix up with them kind of guys. The thing is, if Louie goes on a rampage... Listen, the guy's on the docks. See him with gangsters? That's the end of him. They're gonna sacrifice to put new ragged ears in the local... Marty, you gotta get yourself some faith in the men. The men never stuck with me yet. Because they were sold out all the time. But if they see a guy don't get fancy with hoodlums, they'll lay down their life for you. 
If I could believe that, Lanzo. Oh, believe it. I uh, believe it. Yeah, it's easy enough for you to say. He's the one who's out in front, Enzo. Marty, I'll die before I let something happen to you. I die, Marty. Marty is affected by him, but not wholly swayed. He turns. Teresa's eyes are upon him, and he feels them. All right. Get a pencil. Let's write a leaflet. <laughs> Rocky is walking along the street, completely engrossed in some plan. He passes the union hall, stops, then glancing over his shoulder, goes in the back room. Louis is standing, looking out of a barred window. I want to talk to you, Louis. How about my peer, Louis? What do you mean, peer? I don't even know which side you're on. They just bought in the collection, up his house. If you want to show him who's boss, you know what I mean? The money's on the table for a big leaflet. All right, Rocky. I remember this. I'm looking for my old peer, Louis. I got it in mind. Rocky looks at him somewhat doubtfully and leaves. Outside, he begins to sweat. He stops, retraces his steps, passes the hall, then hurries and is almost trotting. Marty's apartment. The gang, Therese and Marty, are counting the money. Rocky runs up the stairs of Marty's apartment, pushes the door open, and runs in. Marty! Louis trying to reach! I just what? found out! Oh, you coming up here? Yeah! Better get the door out of here! All right, Rocky. Thanks. Remember it now! Hey, no, don't worry, kid. Louis sent him for the door. To race. Go into the other room. I'll send you some of my guys. No, we'll take care of them. Yeah, that's right. Rocky crosses to the back window, opens it, and climbs down the fire escape. Marty goes into the other room and gets out a revolver. You crazy? What are you doing? Stay in here. Marty comes into the dining room where the gang is now circled around the door. One has a chair in his hand, another a big frying pan. There's a knock at the door. Marty glances at the men, then with the muzzle of the gun in his hand, he motions to the men to rush the door. Two hoodlums are in the hall. With a roar, the gang piles on them, kicking them down the stairs and finally into the street, beating them unmercifully. Oh, my God. They was waiting for us. They opened the door and jumped on us. That is my friend. My good friend, Rocky. A peer he wants. All right, all right. Get out of here. All right, take it easy, Louis. That's the way they treat my guys. If they want war... I'm going to give him war. Dark Eyes is slowly sipping a beer in a saloon bar. His razor blade case hanging from his neck. He puts down the glass. Genuine briar pipes, anybody? Better than cigarettes, fellas, believe me. Preserves the shortening of the breath. Farragut enters and stands at the bar. That's what you're all going to die from, you know? Short of breath. You're buying a life insurance policy for a buck. Dark eyes. Huh? Farragut? Yeah. Go find your friend. Some him? Tell him to watch out for automobiles. The war's on. When? They're waiting for him now, outside his house. Hurry up. And let him know who told you, huh? Tell him private. Outside, Dark Eyes starts to half trot, his cane tapping way out in front of him. We keep fastened to his antennae like turning of the head as he tries to locate and figure out the movement of this car. Ahead of him, a blurred sound of men's voices. He quickens his pace. Marty! 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 The car speeds past Dark Eyes, and now we follow it down the street and see in its path Marty and the gang just coming down his stoop. They turn hearing both the car and dark eyes. The car mounts the curb. Piggy runs and the car swerves back on the street, sending him flying across the side. Ah! 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 I think he's just out. Come on, we'll get him to the hospital. I got him, I got him. Come on, come on get going, get going. I got, I got, I got. That was for you. You better get Rocky. Go get Piggy's kids. Let them sleep in our house tonight. Get Rocky. Get some of those men around you. Hi. I don't know what to do! Don't quit! You're here! Get Rocky! Enzo is making a fiery speech on a box to a crowd before him. 
And what did I do about it? Nothing. I'm going to tell you a government fact. Longshore work is the second most dangerous job in America. Yeah, that's, that's right. 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 The right. only job where more men get killed is out west, where they cut the big trees. Yeah. It's even more dangerous than the coal mines. Yeah. Now, if we had democracy in the union, we could limit the sling loads. Yeah. Yeah. Like this, they speed us up heavier and heavier. And what does Louis say? Uh. What does Jack Up Down say in that fancy office up there? Yeah. Nothing. 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 There's Nothing. only one thing cheaper than a busted coffee bag. You know what that is? Mm. A busted longshoreman. Yeah. 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 Hey, 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 I'm going to ask you a question, huh? How are you going to find a Jack Up Town? You don't know what chance you got? Yeah, come on. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Two goats converge on him through the crowd and start deftly pressing him out to the periphery. Yeah. Like this, you got a democracy? I wanted to ask you a question. Marty pulls one goof away from the man who walks away, muttering. What do you think you're doing? Rocky sent us over to see that nobody tries to heckle he is. Rocky? Yeah, he says, you know, to keep the mugs away. You got nothing to worry about, kid. All right, Rocky, what you want? Admit it, they helped you, didn't they? My guys. They help and they hurt. Some of the men sees them and gets the wrong ideas about me. Yeah, but nobody got knocked down by a car since my guys come around. What do you want, Rocky? Now give it to me straight, will ya? I'll get you elected, Marty. And when you're in, I just want you to do me a little favor. Yeah? I want to appear so I can be legitimate stevedore in my own business. How would I get you a peer? Well, for instance, like you got the speed up, huh? That saves the ship owners a lot of money, but... They guys don't like. They start to beef. Who goes in and stops the beef? President or local, right? Okay, that's a favor, right? So the ship owner's got to do a favor too, huh? So the president or local's got a friend which they fix him up with a pier and they load some of their ships on this friend's pier. You understand? That's one thing on the waterfront, Marty. One hand washes the other. Yeah, Rocky, I get it now. That's why I'm nervous for you, kid. You know how many millions of dollars of stuff comes in this port a year? You understand what it's worth if the men should work them ships every day with their mouth shut? You think Louie's going to give that up without a fight? Marty, I don't want you to end up on a cement block in the Jersey marshes like the ones before you. Ride on me now, and later we ride together. I wanted to do it straight, Rocky. Impossible. If the men would stick with me, I could be elected, Rocky. That's the way I want to go in. No deals with nobody. I want this union to belong to the men. It could be a great, great thing. Come over here. What? Come on. Rocky walks to the edge of the jetty, and Marty joins him. Last time I heard that speech was you know when. Fifteen years ago, a guy just like you, Frankie Donetti, he was going to clean up the whole waterfront. You know where he's staying now? Piggy's kids are sleeping all over the room with Marty's in his apartment. Mama comes through carefully, stepping over them, and enters the living room. So when is he going to work or your husband? We got nothing in the house and all of these babies. I don't know. Oh, that's a summer husband. Marty enters. She sees him and goes right on. Run around the street, make a speeches, and as a family, starving to death. I can't argue with you, Mama. Go in the other room. All Piggy's kids in? It's a regular orphan asylum here. But they clean the house for me. One thing, boy, there's some cleaners, those kids. He gets up suddenly and bolts the door. What's that for? Keep it locked from now on. What happened? I just saw Rocky. He gonna give you some men? <gasps> Who's there? Me, Enzo. Open up. Listen, we gotta take a position here. What? It's all over the neighborhood. What? That we're working for Rocky. Marty, we gotta get out on the street tomorrow and tell everybody that we're against Rocky just like Louis. And that we think he's a racket here. That, that, that we got nothing to do with him. All right, all right, take it easy. Sit down. No, that's what we gotta do, Marty. And you gotta make the speeches so that they see you saying it. And so what are you trying to do? Get him killed? The men gotta hear him say it, Terry. Say what? That Rocky's a gangster? What is Rocky going to do when he hears that? He'll put a bullet in him. Marty, unless you open up on Rocky, we'll lick. That's all. 
The man gonna have no faith in you. Enzo, I call him a gangster on the street. He'll put a bullet in me. All right, then. We'll, we'll, we do what we should have done before. We round up a good 25 guys, and you, you make your speeches. If Rocky starts something, we battle it out with him on the street. Marty. Marty, believe me, the guys will stick with you. Enzo, one shot goes off, and I'm afraid I'll be out there all alone with you. Well, then give him a test. Open up on Rocky, all the gangsters, and you'll have an army behind you. Hampers five tomorrow morning, and meet you on the corner. Quarter to six, you start talking. Rocky is driving along the street. Two goofs are in the front seat with him. Something catches his eye. He slows, stops. A small group of men are clustered on the corner. In their center, Enzo is speaking. There's some guys which are going around saying Marty's too much and with certain characters around here. You know what I mean? Now listen, Marty don't owe nothing to no racketeers. Louis or Jack Uptown or Rocky or nobody else. Rocky gets out of his car and walks across the street to where Enzo is speaking. His two goofs are just behind. Enzo sees him, registers trepidation, goes on. We're just plain working longshoremen fed up with the racketeers and the speed up and the whole... What you call Rocky? Huh? Rocky spits into Enzo's face. Instantly, Sal and little Dominic make a move, but Rocky's goofs reach toward their guns. Tears are coming into Enzo's eyes because of this insult. The little crowd begins to melt away under fear of violence. Wait a minute, fellas. Don't go away. Wait a minute. Don't don't let this punk scare you. He'll pay for this. Don't worry, fellas. He spit in my face. You know what would have happened to him? You know, don't you? He'd be sitting on the sidewalk with his gun. So don't tell me no more that I should have faith in the men. Hey, Marty, come on. No, 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 no. There's only one guy who's going to do anything around here. One crazy guy. That punk is going to apologize to me. Or not only, I ain't going to get ten votes. In an hour, the whole neighborhood will be laughing at me. Sleep, talk to him. Don't let him. Uh, he's got to go, kid. They'll all be laughing at him. Then, yeah. then, then, then go with him. Alias, go with him. Hey, hey, we hey, can't. Hey, take it easy. Nobody can do this for me. Enzo, beat yeah. down the restaurant. Okay. I'll bring him to you. Marty, Marty, take your gun. At least take your gun. With my record, I carry a gun? Take it easy. Be down the restaurant. Marty, Marty, take your gun, Marty. Outside, a small group of men are on a street corner. Right in the face. Uh, that's what they get for trying to buck the machine, huh? Well, that washes him up. Yeah. Marty walks past them, his face expressionless, his pace purposeful, regular. As Marty enters Rocky's horse parlor, the goofs get up and Marty opens his jacket to show he has no gun. That ain't man in there? Hey, take it easy. Marty enters the back room and walks up to an astonished Rocky. Punk! Low punk! Stink! Sewer man! You go around wanting people to give you a good name? You spit in your own father's face, which he was a working longshoreman his whole life. On your own father, you spit when you spit on that working man. Louie busted you? Jack Uptown made a monkey out of you? So who do you hurt? An honest family head, which he's trying to should be a little better around here. Rocky scrambles in his desk drawer. Oh, what you want? What you want, your gun? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, get it. Shoot me. Be brave. The women will spit on your funeral, Rocky. Your name will be like a disease around here. On your funeral car, they will spit. Rocky has the gun in his hand, half out of the drawer, and then loosens his hold on it. He should never call me such a name. He got a right to call you worse names. You want your good name? I says, you want your good name so everybody should know you're on the side of the people, Rocky? The man is across the street. Come with me and apologize to him and shake his hand and you'll be able to walk in the street and you'll have nothing to be ashamed of. Come on! Show what kind of size Rocky comes in. Rocky. 
You say no to me now, you better shoot me when I turn my back. Because from now on, Rocky, it's going to be me or you. I don't lose this election because somebody spit on my face, you understand me? Now I'm going to turn around now, Rocky. So make up your mind now. Come with me. Come on. All I want is my good name. Come on. No, I can't go to him. All right, all right. I bring him here. Just stand near the door so people can see it. They vote in a little while. I want they should see. Outside, a scattered and desperate crowd is gathered. Enzo comes over to meet him. He's going to apologize. Rocky is waiting within the door of the store. He doesn't look at Enzo, but extends his hand. They shake. Now, help the people, Rocky. Maybe someday you have a good name yourself. Marty and Enzo turn and walk out into the amazed street. The gang are lined up on the curb outside the Union Hall. The voting is on. A man comes up and starts into the local, winking at them. How about it, Jack? Yeah, it's another one for you, Marty. He's a friend of mine. Uh, looks good, Marty. Looks good, huh? Hey, you really made Rocky crawl down, eh? Yeah. Sure, yeah. why not? Yeah. Look, that's the best thing you ever done. Everybody's talking about it. Yeah. You're lucky you wasn't killed. Well, so vote for me already. The poll's gonna close in two minutes. I voted before. Tell you what. I'll see if I can vote again. That's what I think of you. Oh, go ahead. Try. <laughs> He's going to vote again for me. <laughs> Louis is pacing up and down inside the Union Hall back room. He goes to the door, opens it, looks out. In the hall, three men are marking their ballots. Not a minute. We close it up. Where do I stand? Well, it's hard to tell. I mean, the guys ain't saying much. Yet they shake Marty's hand outside... When they come in here, they shake my hand. All right, I tell you, just to be safe, stuff in 200 for me. 200? Louis, 680 voted already. I, I put in 200 for you. We'll have nearly 900 votes. We only got 700 members. All right, make it 150. That's still too much. I mean, What do you mean? I... We can't have more members? Yeah, but they know. Stuff me 150. Don't give me no argument. Who ever heard such a thing? Should be an election. The president don't even know if he's elected. That's the respect they got for me. Farragut goes into the hall and picks up the ballot box. There are now about 20 men gathered in the hall, including Marty. Hey, wait, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, hey, 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 have the count in a little while, fellas. Hey, Farragut, how about letting some of us in there to watch the yeah. count? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. gladly do that, Marty, but it ain't in the bylaws. What are you bad right. it's in the bylaws, Louie? All right, look it up. If it's in the bylaws, uh, you can come in. In the bylaws? In the bylaws? In the bylaws? Let's go. Come on. Farragut comes in with a ballot box, Louis closing and locking the door behind. Farragut is taking out the ballots. The count begins. You know, that Marty, if he wasn't such a pest, he wouldn't be such a bad guy. Yeah, Marty, <laughs> Louis, Marty, 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 Marty. Hey, what are you doing? I'm counting the votes. What are you, crazy? You got all them votes? Oh, um, then wait, Louis. We shouldn't take too long. Uh, all right. We save time. Uh... He opens a desk drawer and takes out a big sheaf of ballots. He throws them in the box. Louis, you're making a mistake. You don't have too many votes. Louis hesitates, then returns these new ballots to the drawer. There is a banging on the door. Hey, cut that out. What are you doing there? The Bible says we all come in. Count, count, count. Damn it. All right, we almost finished. He joins Farragut and they both resume counting as the banging starts again and a loud hubbub of voices is heard. Suddenly, Louis reopens the desk drawer, takes out the phony ballots and throws them into the ballot box. Uh, all right, mark down. God, Linda, we have done my mark down. Louis, 631, Marty, 120. Louis, you, you put at least 100 more than that in here. Louis sweeps up all the ballots, throws them into the box and puts the box into the open safe and shuts the safe door, turning the combination. Without another word to Farragut, he goes to the office door and opens it onto the yelling outside. Hey, hey, whoa, whoa. Hey, what kind of way is that to act? That is the kind of respect for your own president? Marty has a bylaw book in his hand. It says here we could be in there to watch. Yeah. Where? Yeah, we got it right. in the book. Here. Oh. 
Well, you see, you learn something every day. I didn't know that. Yeah. Hey, uh, That's right. Give him the vote, Farragut. Go ahead. Thank you. So quick, you counted already? Look, <laughs> don't make no accusations, Marty, because I got no patience on that kind of accusations. I give you my congratulations. You got a nice vote. Hey, and, and I want to say to all you fellas that this guy here, he put up a great fight, which he's a credit to the whole organization. Mm-hmm. Let's uh, let, let's give him a nice big hand, fellas. Yeah. What is he talking Yeah. The vote. Marty... 120. Hey. Louis, 631. Louis grabs Marty's hand and holds on to it. I, I tell you, you, you got a nice vote. I, I was surprised, you, believe me, but you got to come to you. You fought a great fight all the way down the line. I want to see them ballots. Now, don't be sore. See, I got more than 120. I got to have more. Louis, I want to see them ballots. Suddenly, a hand is on his shoulder, and he turns to see a cop and Tom, the detective. Hey, take it easy! Huh. Hey, he's starting a riot or something! Oh, don't you know the score here yet, Marty? Go home. You know what I mean? You can't stand any more trouble. Go ahead, kid. You got 19 rabs on you, kid. Don't be a dope. He'll fix the door so you'll never get out. Now, don't make no misdemeanor, you hear me? You got a family. Now, get going. Tom walks outside to the police car and gets in. Hey, hey, Marty. You want to do something? What? All right, now, we come back tonight, huh? We bust the door down, and we take the hall. Uh, what for? Well, we, we hole up in there till he produces them ballots, and we get a straight count. Oh, Marty, you got a record. You can't break down no doors. Now look at them. They was in there yelling with us. We go to all their houses tonight and bring them with us, and we stick in the hall till he produces the vote. Come on! Marty, you can't. I walk away from this, and they won't listen to nobody again for ten years. He ain't gonna make no monkey out of me. Ten o'clock tonight. Be on the corner. Bring every man you know. And have something in your hand. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Come on. Louis and Farragut are at a table in an empty restaurant with a new figure, Hefferman. A florid, bulky, well-dressed man. I ain't gonna say it again, Louie. This is straight from Jack Uptown. Now, he says go over there and tell Louie to clean out the hall. I heard that twice already. Louie, you gotta go in there and clean them out. What kind of example is this for the rest of the locals that a bunch of monkeys can go in and take over just because they don't like the vote? Now, that's straight from Jack, so you better move. Yeah, that's easy for him to say. You know what I look like if I have to rough up my own guys to get into my own local? Whole neighborhood be laughing at me for two years. I don't want to bust no heads on my own men. I don't sit in no fancy office with five secretaries like Jack. I got to live with these guys. All right. Well, I told you. They better be out of there by morning, or there's going to be business for you uptown. As Hefferman walks out, Louis, in a sweat, gets up and goes to the front window and looks out of the Union Hall. The door and windows are barricaded with desks and chairs. Go across the street. Tell him I give him a job a hundred and a quarter a week. Call it off. You want to admit you're licked? Why? I ain't. He'll turn it down. He'll figure you know you're strapped and you're trying for a cheap deal. There'll be no more doubt in his mind he won the vote. So what should I do? What should I do? What that guy want from me? What am I, ship owner? Like in better conditions? What they want from me? Let them go fight ship owners. That's what you're supposed to do, Louis. I should fight the ship owners? What, are you going crazy too? Louis, no matter what happens tonight, you're on your way out unless you what up. What kind of talk are you still Yeah, me? Louis, this ain't 25 years ago. When we used to back them off the boats and put them to work, and, and when they start to beef, kick them in the face. A lot of these American-born guys, a lot of them was in the war. There's different kind of unions today. They're going to have democracy in this union, Louis. And if you smart, you go with them and not against them. Now, you've been laughing at me for five years, and this is the answer. I got a job. I got to keep them in line or I'm going to be out in the street myself. I got to get the hall back or I start busting heads. Now, give me ideas. Go across the street, Louis. Open the safe and give them the count. You trying to cut my throat? You Farragut? give them the count or you'll have to bust heads. Yeah? 
They ain't getting out so easy. That's the advice you give me? Get out! He picks up a big frying pan. You're a traitor to me! Get out or I throw you out! Farragut goes quickly. Louis storms into the phone booth and dials. Lo, it's Louis. Give me Jack, quick. Louis! He opens the door of the booth and beckons a goof. How many guys we can get tonight, right away? Uh, Ten, twelve, right away. Jack, Louis. All right, all right, don't get excited. Listen. No, Jack, I don't want the cops because the guys will raise such a beef. You know what I mean? Maybe I'll have to open the safe and give them the count. I don't know, Jack. I didn't have time to finish counting. They were banging down the door of my head. So listen. Send me over 25 guys and we take the hall. All right, Jack. I'm sorry. It's just I was trying not to bust no heads. Know what I mean? Rocky is working on his books in his parlor. Farragut rushes in, slams the door behind him, and without a word picks up a sheet of paper and writes something down. Then he folds the piece of paper and holds it in his hand. You want to do something? What happened? Go over to the hall and give this to Marty and tell him who gave it to you. Huh? Just tell him. Go ahead. You could be a hero. What's this? The ballot box is in the safe. That's the combination. A sledgehammer is rising in the air and smashes down on a jimmy bar in the safe. Marty, Enzo, and the gang are around it, eagerly watching in silence. Again, sleeper strikes. Suddenly, Sal rushes into the office from the outside hall. Hey, I can't. This car's coming up. Marty pushes through where some 40 men are armed with bats and looks into the street through the window. A sedan is pulling up and Goofs are getting out. Up the street further, another car. Also Goofs. Where's Horse? He. Get on that hammer. From out of the crowd comes Horse, a giant of a man. Marty grabs him by the arm and goes with him into the back office. Horse picks up the hammer and with a terrible might, smashes down on the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's it. Come on. Turn the back. Let me get a bite. Jeez, horse. We need to take a bath. <laughs> what do you mean? I'll take you up to the house. I'll show you. It's like a round and you sit in it with water. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> all right, all right. Just lay into it, horse. Horse steps back, raises the hammer, and comes down on the bar. <laughs> with little effect. Again, horse comes down on the bar. And now you're digging. It wedges in deep oh, this time. With the gas coming off of this guy, we could light up the city. <laughs> hey, Don't nobody light no matches hey, now. Hey, come on, boy. Hey, it's Rocky. Anybody with him? All right, let him in. It's true, Marty. Maybe something will happen. But keep hitting, horse. Right. They're coming in from uptown. <laughs> I had to jump the fence. You want the vote? What do you think? I grabbed hold of Farragut. I talked it out of him. What is it? The combination. The combination. Whoa. Whoa. I never opened no safe. I opened the safe. I must assure one or Farragut would never give that away. You see, fellas, they're all coming to our side. Yeah. I, I had some time talking it out of him. Don't worry. You're all right, Rocky. Yeah, I, got right, Rocky. I got it. I got it. I got it. Sleeper opens the safe. Draws out the ballot box. All right, Dominic, count, huh? Yeah. Enzo, take it down. Louis. Yeah, yeah. Louis. Yeah. Marty. Yeah. Louis. Marty. Yeah. Marty. The restaurant is now crowded with goofs. At a back table, Hefferman, Louis, and some heavyweights. Farragut enters. You're going to bust it open? I'm trying to get somebody in there to tell them. I give them to half past one. That's ten minutes, but they won't open the door so I can tell them. I'll get the door open for you. You do that for me, Farragut. I appreciate Because if they know what I got here, they're going to go home. Yeah, I'll tell them. First, you got to take back what you said before. What I said? That I'm a traitor to you. I didn't mean that, kid. Go ahead. Well, I'll get them out for you. Okay. Back in the Union Hall, many men are clustered around little Dominic as he continues to count off, and Marty writes the count on paper. Only a handful of votes are left in Dominic's hand. Marty, Marty, Louis. Well, what? It's impossible. We got 700 members, right? There's 892 votes here. What? He stuffed the box. I bet you really won. Come on. H how, how many you get, huh? 164. 
Well, look around. See? See where he threw my boats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, here. Yeah. Barry gets here. Watch the top, Marty. Let him in. Now we'll know. Yeah. Okay, come here. He'll sort it out. Farragut. Hey, he stuffed the box. Where's my votes? What, what do you mean? How many did you get? 164, I got. Where's the rest of my votes? Yeah. 164? What'd he do with my votes? He stuffed the box with his own votes, but he didn't throw none away. Hey, you're lying to me. No, I swear to you, Marty. There wasn't time to pick yours out. He, he didn't throw none away. I, I, I guess... I guess you just lost, kid. That's impossible. I got 50 guys here, and if I'd have had time, we'd have gotten at least 150 more to come down. There were 200 guys shook my hand on that sidewalk before they'd voted. Farragut, where's the rest of my votes? I'm telling you the truth, I swear. Sleeper, where's Sleeper? Here, take a couple of guys and go out and bring all the men you know who voted for me. They'll come down, go ahead. You tell Louis that in two hours, there'll be at least 200 men here to swear they voted for me. Then I want to hear you tell me you didn't throw away my votes. Now get going, sleeper. Why were you standing there? Marty, that ain't such a good idea. i tell you why. I, I don't think 200 voted for you. I mean, there's even guys here who didn't. Here? You crazy? I, I'm telling you, Marty. There's guys here who didn't vote for me? No. Please, fellas, tell me the truth. I won't hold it against you. You got a right to vote the way you want. Listen, fellas, I don't care no more because it's all over. See, just, just for myself, tell me. What are you trying to pull here? Marty, Marty. What are you... I didn't vote for you, Marty. You want to smack me? Smack me. Why didn't you... you know, I got nervous the last minute. I... I... Well, don't let me stand in here, Pete. You didn't vote for him, did you? Uh, piggy, Piggy, come on, tell the truth. I was gonna, Marty. I swear I was gonna, but then last minute... Piggy, how could you? Marty, suppose, suppose you was president, and I know you. You'd never play ball with Jack uptown, and then pretty soon he'd put the screws to you and blockade the whole local, and nobody'd work. Marty, I gotta work. I got all the kids. Then what are you here for? I want to help you, Marty. You want to help me? You've done a great thing, Marty. Great thing. He's make a jerk out of me, and I done a great. L- Louie knows now. We, we ain't gonna take that pushing around no more. That's He'll right. listen when we talk. Yeah, to him. listen. Yeah. You're stupid. He's gonna laugh. And the next time somebody tells you how tough it is for the longshoreman, laugh, laugh, because that's the way he wants it. Tough, crooked, and rotten. He's all getting everything you deserve. Get out of my way! No, stay here, Marty. Yeah. Stay here. Marty. Stay look, look, fellas. I'll, uh, I'll go across to, to Louis. Now get this, and uh, we demand he makes Marty delegate, huh? Yeah. yeah. And if if he don't, we we hold the hall till the river dries up. Yeah. Huh? That's Come it. on. Louis walks in with a few goons behind him. The men grip their weapons. He got a hundred and sixty-four. There's some fellas outside, from uptown. You want to let bygones be bygones? Louis, we want Marty to be delegate. Otherwise, this ain't never going to end, Louis. He be our delegate, all right? That's what we demand. Yeah. I'm going to tell you a little secret, Marty. Long time ago, I was thinking to make you delegate. So you didn't have to do all of this to be a delegate. So let this be a lesson to you. I'm president. And I stays president because I gives the men exactly what they want. They want you be delegate, you can be delegate. And as long as you remember that I'm always giving the men what they want, you're going to stay delegate. Deal? He holds out his hand for Marty to shake. Marty doesn't move. Then his hand starts to rise towards Louis. No! No delegate! Marty, he's a lie! The men no one no crook! The men no one racketeer! No! Desperately... Old Dominic takes a $5 bill from his pocket Marty. and holds it in front of Marty's face. 24 years, I saved my money. I want to go back to Italy because that's where I'm going to die. I never give money nobody. But you, I want you to take this money and make leaflet, make speech and, and fight for the men. Marty, I'm in this country 25 years. You, the first man, he teach me what is America. 25 years, I'm afraid. Now I'm not afraid. I vote for you. 
Yeah, I vote for him. No be delicate, no be crook. Be brave. And pretty soon, 700, no, 7,000 men are going to vote for him. Take. He presses the money into Marty's hand. Teach. Go. Marty looks into the work-worn face, and his own face fills with love. He moves past Louis. Old Dominic and now the others follow out of the hall. Marty's face is elated, determined. As he walks, the crowd of men behind him thickens as they all pour out of the hall. And it keeps thickening. Widening. In The Hook by Arthur Miller, Marty was played by Elliot Cowan, Rocky by Michael Feast, and Louis by Nigel Lindsay. Farragut was Tim Pickett-Smith. Therese, Joanne Pierce. Sleeper, Kerry Shale. Piggy, Nathan Wiley. Enzo and Dark Eyes, Jonathan Guy Lewis. Old Dominic and Sal, Vincent Riata. And Mama by Lorelai King. Irene was played by Holly Burgess and Pete by Leo Heller. Other parts were played by members of the company. The narrator was David Suchet. The Hook was directed by Adrian Noble and produced by Lawrence Bowen. It was a feel-good fiction production for BBC Radio 4. <laughs> <laughs>